Hello, everybody, and welcome to Love Fraud Live. I'm Donna Anderson, author of lovefraud.com, and this is the YouTube show where you learn how to spot sociopaths, get them out of your life, and recover from the damage that they cause. Millions of sociopaths live all around us, and you can encounter them anywhere, in your family, at work, in a bar, in your neighborhood, and certainly online. Today, we're going to talk specifically about sociopaths in romantic relationships. And just so you know who I'm referring to, by sociopath, I mean someone who could be clinically diagnosed with antisocial, narcissistic, borderline, histrionic, or psychopathic personality disorder. Now, this is a live streaming show, of course, and after my short presentation, I'll answer any questions that you have. So please go ahead and send your questions by chat as we go along. Okay, so today's topic is sociopathic seduction strategies. Since I launched Love Fraud back in 2005, I've learned that sociopaths tend to use all the same techniques while reeling in new romantic partners. It's as if they're all working from the same well-known playbook. So today, we're going to pretend that we've found this playbook. It was written by an alpha sociopath for the benefit of the trainees and teaches them the ploys that they should use to convince targets to fall in love with them. Sociopaths, of course, don't really fall in love, no matter what they say to you. They are incapable of real love. They are incapable of truly caring about another person's well-being. So they're not really looking for someone to love. They are looking for someone to exploit. So here we go. Imagine that I am reading to you the master's tips from the playbook. Here's tip number one. Listen intently to your targets, staring into their eyes and hanging on their every word. Your target will be flattered and impressed that you are paying so much attention to them. They will believe that it is because you are filled with desire for them. Your undivided attention encourages them to keep talking and remember what they say because later you may need to use it as ammunition against them. Here's tip number two. Call, text, and email your targets frequently. They will interpret your constant attention as a sign that you are smitten with them and will not notice that you are establishing control over them. Here's tip number three. Mirror your targets. What your targets really want is to see their own images reflected in your eyes. Convince them that you like everything that they like and share their values, and they will believe that the two of you are soulmates and your relationship was meant to be. Here's tip number four. Proclaim your love quickly and loudly. Because most normal people hesitate to talk about their feelings, your targets will assume that you are head over heels in love with them, so much so that you just must express your emotions. This will smash their defenses. If your targets at first rebuff your advances, pursue, pursue, pursue. This is tip number five. When you keep at it, the targets will eventually believe that you are genuinely interested in them. Wanting to be fair and non-judgmental, they will believe that they should give you a chance. And this can be the opening that you can exploit. Here's tip number six. Create a whirlwind romance. When you keep your targets spinning, they lose their balance and become easier to manipulate. So pour it on. Call them all the time. See them as often as you can. Plan getaways. Talk about the future. So what if your excitement is contrived? They'll never figure it out and you'll get what you want. Tip number seven, 
Give your targets gifts, no matter how small. Never show up empty-handed. Always bring something, even if it's only a fortune cookie that you swiped from your coworker's lunch. This will make your targets feel the need to reciprocate, which will increase their investment in the relationship. And here is tip number eight. Make your targets feel sorry for you. This is a good one. The juiciest targets are empathetic people, and empaths must respond to pitiful stories. So tell them about your abusive childhood, your crazy exes, your inconsiderate boss. If you don't have sad stories, make them up. Your targets will believe you, and their empathy will keep them hooked. Here's tip number eight. I'm sorry, tip number nine. We already did eight. Tip number nine. Bed your targets as quickly as possible. Sex floods your targets with oxytocin, which is a neurotransmitter and hormone that is called nature's love glue. Oxytocin makes your targets trust you. The more sex, the more they trust you, and the more you can manipulate them. Plus, you'll probably enjoy the sex. Tip number 10, find your target's vulnerabilities. Discover their deepest needs, their deepest fears and desires. When you set your hook firmly into their most private vulnerabilities, they will not be able to escape. Tip number 11, to win your target back, employ the grand gesture. If you do something that hurts or angers your target, hey, nobody's perfect, you may need extraordinary measures to get back on track. Perhaps it's an extravagant gift, which you can steal if you have to, or an extraordinary date. And if you're really good, you'll figure out a way to get them to pay for it. But if you've really screwed up, you may need to go for the grand gesture. This would be something like getting on your knee in front of their friends and family to propose. They'll succumb and will be more bonded to you than ever. Finally, Here's tip number 12. Ask about your target's hope and dreams and then promise to make them come true. This one is practically foolproof. Promising to make their dreams come true has the effect of making it very difficult for your targets to leave because if they give up on the relationship, they also must give up on their hopes and dreams. Whew, whew. I have just described 12 sociopathic seduction strategies. It's scary to think that there might be a reference manual floating around teaching sociopaths how to seduce their targets. The truth is even more frightening. There is no manual. And in seducing their targets, sociopaths just do what comes naturally. That's frightening. Okay. So I'm almost finished with my presentation. If you have any questions, please go ahead and send them to me now. This video is based on one of the articles in my latest book, Seduced by a Sociopath. Yep, here it is right here, Seduced by a Sociopath. The book is a curated collection of about 50 love fraud blog articles on the topic of sociopathic seduction. Other articles include why relationships with sociopaths are so addictive, and eight ways that your body warns you about sociopaths. And here's another one, why we fall for romance scams, and many more articles. So if you're looking for a partner and really want to protect yourself, you'll need to learn everything that's in the book because that's how you will protect yourself. And links to the book are in the description below. Okay, so it looks like we have some comments. Let's see what the questions are. Oh, Karen says she was married to a sociopath for 39 years. Oi. Okay, I thought she was a narcissist and didn't know that she is actually a sociopath. 
literally all of the check boxes on the love fraud sociopath except seven boxes. Yes, um, there is a lot of overlap among these various disorders. Um, antisocial personality disorder is one of the ones that I talk about when I refer to sociopaths. Uh, I explained in a previous video that a lot of uh, professionals, mental health professionals, use the word sociopath as a synonym for antisocial personality disorder. But I'm using the word a little bit differently. Um, I'm using it as an umbrella term for all of those disorders, antisocial, narcissistic, borderline, and histrionic, and also psychopathic. And the reason I'm doing that is because we need to be able to talk about all of these conditions because, uh, as you notice, there's an awful lot of overlap. Um, people can be part narcissistic and, and part antisocial. In fact, uh, narcissistic traits is one of the components of antisocial personality disorder. So there's a lot of overlap. It often doesn't make a lot of sense to try and figure out exactly which disorder somebody may have. The key is you need to know that they're out there and you need to protect yourself from all of them. So talking about them generally as sociopaths kind of covers all the bases. All right, let's see what else we have. Wow, my ex fits 11 of them. Okay, Cece. Yep. All right, here's the six liter Joe. I have taken her back numerous times. How do I, for certain, not get addicted again? I don't want to jump into another relationship. Okay. Um, if this woman meets the checks the check boxes, as other people have said, if you have a, a pretty good feeling that she is a sociopath, you need to understand that it will never change. Once a sociopath is an adult, there isn't really any therapy that will change them. Um, I mean, they may be able to moderate their behavior a little bit, but they're never going to be the kind, giving, warm, empathetic person that you want and deserve. So what you need to do is really make up your mind that you are going to choose yourself and break it off with this person. Um, and when you break it off, the important thing is no contact. You can't talk to her. You can't have text exchanges. You can't uh, do emails, certainly don't go and see her. When you establish no contact, it's just cut the person out of your life and then be very firm about that because no contact is what allows you to get over the addiction. And this is an addiction because these relationships are highly addictive. And I talk about that on Love Fraud a lot. So in order to break it, you have to treat it like an addiction. And if you've ever tried to quit smoking or drinking or, or coffee or anything like that, you know that you, you have to stop and then you just can't go back because if you go back, you're drawn into it again. And that's exactly what happens with these involvements. So what you want to do is establish no contact and then take it one day at a time because sometimes it's just too overwhelming to think that I can never go back to this person. So just think about it for today. I, I'm not gonna call her today, or I'm not gonna respond to her today. And then you get through the day, and then you think about it tomorrow. I'm not gonna do it today. And you just add one day after the next, and the longer you're away, the more the addiction dissipates and your brain starts to come out of the fog. So what I would recommend is you know, first of all, no contact with this person. And then secondly, work on your emotional healing um, because you really do need to take time for yourself to get over the trauma of what's happened and to process the pain and the betrayal. So those are the things that you need to do. But the key is no contact. No contact changes the dynamics. It, it allows you to come out of the fog and with no contact, that's how you can move forward. Okay, let's see what else we have. Oh, CC just said everything that I was going to say, that I did say.
okay. Oh, Karen says, my four adult kids have now ostracized me and I didn't do anything. He wanted a divorce, lies, steals. Why does that happen? Um, a lot of sociopaths simply want to destroy whatever is left. You know, if, if they're done with you, they want to grind you into the dirt. And it's, it's really sad. Um, I hope that your adult kids will come around someday. The key to that actually is whether or not um, they have inherited some of the disorder. I mean, unfortunately, these personality disorders are highly genetic. So it's possible that, um, that they've inherited some of it. Now, if, if they haven't, and, and hopefully they haven't, then you have a chance that they may at some point start to see um, the lies and then see the cruelty with which your ex is treating you. Um, I hope that's the case. And, you know, then it, it may just be a matter of slowly trying to rebuild your relationships. So I hope that you're able to do that. Okay, well, that appears to be the questions for today. I thank you so much for joining me and uh, we'll be here same time, same station next week, Tuesday at 8 p.m at Love Fraud Live. Talk to you later.